Education, Laurie Kilmartin. Where are you? I'm uh, at, at home. Um, I, uh, I was in Madison last week and I came back on Sunday. And then, um, did you do any comedy this week? None. Mm. I did a bunch of podcasts. The closest I came to it was the... The Ian Carmel, Ian Carmel, Ian Carmel's podcast, where it was yeah. kind of like, where it was riffing and hanging out with comics and uh, uh, they do a, he does a, his podcast is a, a fake fantasy draft thing. Uh-huh. And so the, what we fantasy drafted was uh, a movie. It was a movie one and it was super fun. And that was the closest I came to stand up. And so I, and sports and sports uh, solid, but this is my shooting hand. Uh, so I'm a little twitchy. And um, I um, I uh, I did two sets of flappers this week, and um, I wore masks both. So the first set, the first one, I went up in just the blue surgical mask, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and on stage? Yeah, on stage. I did my set with it on, and I I remember when I was on stage, I'm like, oh, this is what I tried to do. I did a yoga class once with it on hot yoga for 90 minutes, and it starts when you, those things you can't really speak in because they start to go in your mouth when you inhale. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, ah, fuck, but I just finished this set. It wasn't terrible. It was just, I only had to do 12 minutes. It was annoying to me, but it was a fine set. And then the next night I had another set there and I had two masks on. I had the blue one on underneath and the white one on, on top, the white, uh, KN95. And so okay. I was just hanging backstage talking with a comic and then I, I had, had been introduced. So I didn't have time to take the second mask off. So I just ran up there and I did it with two masks on, but it actually was easier because it may, because of the white one was on top, the air wasn't being sucked. It, the blue one wasn't flimsy and the, you know, the set was fine. Like, I, I don't think I would do 45 or 50 minutes like that. I think that would be really irritating to people that came to a show but if you're just one of like 10 comics you can you can be the weirdo I guess you know you could get away you feel like it 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 doesn't cost you anything to just do it yeah and and kind of joking about it and stuff like that and and uh I'm very paranoid right now uh, about this next gig um but I still want to do it yeah yeah. Um, you're still going right for Vermont yeah Yeah. so yeah to Vermont Comedy Club and I'm gonna bring I'm bringing on my carry on because I'm my son's going with me because his yeah. dad is gone. So I can't leave him alone at the house. Right. No. And uh, I figure we'll go to Vermont a couple of days early and just be out in the snow, be outside a lot. And then in yeah. the hotel. Because Otherwise he would just live in your house and he would draw for seven days and then not do anything but eat crackers. Right. So well, no, he'd eat more than that. But um, here's my point is uh, so I'm bringing two uh, like air fresheners like you know the the ones you have in your bedroom in the carry-ons right and what I'll do is um when we're at the airport we're gonna have a layover for like four hours at JFK which Mm -hmm. will just be crawling with COVID right Mm -hmm. um so we're just gonna plug that plug one of them in and just sit by it for the four (laughs) hours you'll be like hobos but you'll be hovering around the uh you're gonna cozy up to the instead of a fire it's the air purifier I also bought a portable one for him to hold under his nose in case he wants to eat Cheez-Its on the plane or something, right? <laughs> and then uh, and then at the at the club, I think what I'm going to try is having, I'm going to put one purifier in the hotel room to run 24 hours a day. And then the other one on stage near me. So I'll put it on the stool. No, so it's near me. I, the most, the, the noise, there'll be a little bit of noise from it because it's a fan. But I think it'll bother me more than anybody else because it, it'll be up on stage, you know, because of the way you can put uh, the mic in. Club it. is. You guys, Pardon? are you bringing your own mic? No, it's not. It's not a mic born illness. <laughs> it's airborne. <laughs> so I just want to clean the air around me. That's my hope. And uh, that I won't that no one will uh, accidentally give me Omicron. That's uh, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we know a bunch of people who got it. Yeah. Triple vaxxed people too. Mm-hmm. I, uh, we, uh, I'm in San Francisco and um, we drove here. We drove up, I think it was Thursday 
and hooked up with Andy's mom. And then we drove through Merced where we had, by the way, uh, Yelp turned me on to a, we stopped for lunch and we stopped at a place that was an Indian restaurant, Merced. Mm -hmm. It is the best Indian food I've ever had in my life. Wow. That is weird because Merced is not known for anything but meth and death. And, Wait, uh, meth and death, he said? Yeah, it's not, it's not a... I mean, the thing is, it looked like a perfectly nice little town. Like, I'm sure there's a Norman Rockwell tour, but all the all the news stories I ever hear about Merced are, it's Merced and Modesto. They're just, well, everybody is constantly bad mouthing them. Yes. I mean, yeah. And that that from the beginning of stand-up comedy in San Francisco, wow. Merced was your go-to punchline. It was that oh. town. Oh, was but, it? Okay. Uh, but only also if the comic ahead of you had done Stockton, you were good with Merced, you know, <laughs> and vice versa. Like it goes Modesto and then Stockton, Merced and Fresno. Those are your four Central Valley towns that as a San Francisco comic, you could count on for some sort of laugh. But and, and they always had a red lion that did stand up. Right. <laughs> that right. Had stand up in the, nice in the, in the lounge or whatever. But yep. um uh, yeah, I think they have a high immigrant um, community as well. So it uh, always have. I mean, the weird yeah. thing is, is when you think about it, it was 100, you know, 150 years ago uh, or 120 years ago, it was all a bunch of Asian people and then a bunch of um, Armenian people, uh, especially like the Central Valley, Fresno and all that mm -hmm. was just a just a pile of Armenians just coming on in, selling rugs, buying shit yeah it was amazing and um but so we, yeah so then we drove we have been in california we've been in san francisco we're staying at the fairmont the fairmont has a gingerbread uh like a giant gingerbread thing in the foyer and a giant christmas tree that by oh, the thanks. way looks almost exactly like the giant christmas tree that was in fister last weekend uh in milwaukee oh really <laughs> yeah that's the same it's the same color scheme it's hmm. weird and um this we could, uh fairmonts maybe the f hotels all subscribe to the same uh maybe color. i don't know i, I lost a jackie i'm so tired i couldn't even finish my riff it, I, I was like this isn't a good one and just stop talking <laughs> but i haven't done any stand-up and i don't think i have any stand-up this week and um i don't do stand-up it turns out all <laughs> you stops. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I just help Andy and his mom. And, <laughs> um, and we're having a lovely time, but it's a lot of wrangling. And and so yesterday we went to Andy's cousins for Christmas. And he had he had invited him and his husband had invited four people and, and then us. Mm -hmm. And we all had to take COVID tests before we came in. Mm -hmm. We all had to take the rapid. That was his gift to us. The gift that we don't currently have, whatever a rapid test is de denoting COVID, yeah. and um, and that was lovely. And then we sat there for a long time, and then we did like a white elephant. Uh, it almost felt 2019. We did like a little white, white oh. elephant trade gift thing, and then tomorrow we're staying one more night. Tomorrow we drive back. We get the dogs out of the kennel and the cat, and then we drive back to LA on Tuesday. And How many dogs do you have? I thought you just said Gordon. We have Gordy and uh, and Chris, Andy's mom, has um, oh, okay. Tyson and Tigger the cat. Mm -hmm. So um, two dogs and a cat. Right. Okay. I um, I also figured, so, so after the show on Friday night, I'll, um, from fr I guess I have, I'll have to wear a mask inside the hotel room all friday night and all day saturday right and then why in the hotel room because i will have been unmasked in front of two two different shows of people you know what i mean yeah i don't and then if uh i do have some little some rapid tests so i can probably I, I maybe Saturday morning just take a test I mean I don't even know if it shows up that quickly if, if you were exposed to send me a Friday night it, I don't think it would show up on Saturday morning on a rapid test I don't think so but, but uh, so I, I feel I figure I'll be masked indoors at the hotel from Friday night until we leave on Sunday morning basically 
and then we'll both be masked again in the back. And, and when we come home, and then I'll take a rapid test, a PCR, and a rap, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just to, what's the difference between a PCR and a rapid test? The PCR it takes a couple of days to come back. Like I, I, you have to go to a location, and they oh, show the a yeah. Um, well, I guess you, you do it yourself too. But um, uh, so I just did one this morning. I was in line for two hours. I had an appointment. And it's weird because I'd done the previous Monday. I've been doing them Mondays after I get back from road gigs. And it's like one or two cars in front of me. Like I pull right in and get my thing. And it was a two hour wait today. It's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if, if everyone's spooked finally or or what. I just, I just don't, with, I don't know what the feeling is going to be like, you know? I, yeah. At Flappers, I mean, a lot of people were wearing masks, but, you know, a lot of people weren't as well. There's just some people that are not, on Twitter, like we are. And so we're not like you probably follow or you, it, it gets retweeted into your timeline, different doctors and stuff like that. So that you're paying attention to that stuff. But a lot of people just aren't. And they're like, well, oh, and a couple of our friends who are, who are comics, road comics have it, or they just go to work and they got it. Like, you know, people, people outside the, the ones I know. Well, on the thread, no, no. People that, okay. that I think we both know. You probably know other people that have it, but I, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know what to do. I think this week I might try to do some Zoom shows. Yeah, maybe, I maybe mean, maybe I'll do a Zoom show or two just to just to keep my hand in the in in the stand up comedy game. I don't know, but if you know this about me, but I got bit by the stand up comedy bug about thirty five <laughs> years ago, and uh, <laughs> so. If I, if maybe we could do a zoom for our uh, Patreons or something. Oh, they would like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, try to figure yeah, out a time. And cause when do you leave? Do you leave on Thursday? I leave uh Tuesday night. Oh God. All yeah. right. Cause you're flying into New York and driving there, right? Is that correct? No, I am. Uh, we're going to fly the whole time. There's a, oh, you're like, just there's fly a layover at JFK. Um, and that is all. Yeah. Yeah, the next thing I do is essentially I'm doing my vision board on the 31st with Ron Funches. Oh, cool. And that'll be fun. Yeah. And then uh, and then it says I have a statement of information that is due on my taxes. That's mm. not stand-up comedy at all. What's happened? <laughs> and, uh, I need some stand-up comedy. I don't have any stand-up comedy until the 16th when we are supposedly going to New York. Yeah, so we'll, yeah. <laughs> We'll be in. We'll New be York talking. We'll be discussing. I will be in Ohio the three days before that. Which really? Are you? Oh, that's right. You're doing hilarities or something, right? Go bananas. Go bananas. Yeah, the old old uh, red state Ohio. <laughs> it's uh, Ugh. could be anything, and yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm all of my stuff. My stuff starts the 16th and then goes to the end of the month. So I'm hoping in two weeks, it'll either have blown up so big that everything will shut down or um, it'll have blown through. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a shutdown. I oh, think no? we're all on our own to try oh, to figure you, it out. I mean, that's just, what it is right now. And I don't see Biden doing any sort of shutdown. It, the, it, you know, it, it, you have to decide whether you're going to perform at a place or not. I don't think any venue is going to do it for you. Okay, well, um, yeah, I'm going. So yeah. it's Dr. Grins, which is so funny. Is it Dr. Grins? Uh, when you do when Comedy you Castle. Dr. Grins? I'm not doing, I'm doing Comedy Castle, not Dr. Grins. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I thought it Yeah, was. Comedy Castle's in Royal Oak, and it's um, the third week of January. So it's right after the Bell House. Right after Bell House, and then right after that is Comedy on State. Oh, okay. Right after the Bell House, I do um, Bloomington. Oh, nice. And then, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I'll see how this, how it feels to have a, a purifier on stage near me, you know? Yeah. I can't wait to hear the riffing. What's <laughs> what we can be like, Hey, you guys, it's, it, it's almost like ventriloquism. You could just what did you guys want to know? Uh, no, thank you. But uh, <laughs> that's a great suggestion that I'm going to let you give someone else. Uh, hopefully, uh, it won't be so ob obtrusive 
you know, but I also, I, I just need to feel like slightly protected on stage, you know? Yeah. You I, just, felt, I mean, I felt fine with thing. two masks on at Flappers, but you know, I don't, again, I'm not sure that that's like, you know. A headline a set response. Set. Following yeah. comics are probably are not going to be masked, you know, like, but, uh, but also, you know, if you're headlining, you're up there the longest. I have a question. So it's, it's Sunday night. Is there a Sunday night at the punchline tonight or? Yeah, I think there always is. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to pop over? I'd like to, but I think that, uh, I have this and then I, I, I don't know what we're doing tonight, but, um, uh, I think you, we're going to go to the like, Tonga room. Pardon? We're going to go to the Tonga room. I don't know what that is. Some sort of tiki bar in this hotel. Oh, okay. So um, I'm gonna stare at other people while they try out the rum drinks. Have you have you walked or along the piers and all that kind of stuff? No, it's been raining nonstop. That's hey, that's the best time to be there. There'll be plenty of uh, you know, seals and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um yeah. Uh we have not. We have not. We have mostly um spent it in in these two rooms and uh and then mm -hmm. over at richard's house mm -hmm. and then um in the foyer when it's not too busy because there's a there's a great there's some Christmassy stuff going on i want to do stand-up comedy again Lori. i know <laughs> i know <laughs> so what's happening at Cobbs? is there a show at Cobbs? I don't know. Well, on a Sunday? Yeah, they always have uh, shows. I don't, uh, Kyle, can you check? Hold on, I'm gonna check. You're gonna check. Well, it's a real yeah. It's a real clock eater, you guys. Uh, I brought. Well, uh, I'm reading this comic book. I'm seeing the name Tom Papa pop up. Oh. Okay. I thought he was just here with Kira Soltanovich. Uh, it might be an old name. It might be 26. Uh, oh, it's an all star show. I mean. Tonight? It's an all-star show, which means it's like, you know, 10 comics doing eight minutes or whatever. Right, right. It's showcasey. Mm -hmm. So I probably strong arm my, no, nah, I don't, I don't have that kind of power in this town, but. Um, <laughs> I think if you walked in, uh, at least half the comics would immediately know who you are and go, oh my yeah. gosh. Hey, did you, so did you see the breakup on Ontario Bang? Uh, they broke us. They were like, we're going to give Jackie a chance to maybe be the top 11 comics in, in specials with videos. And you're going to mm -hmm. be the top 10 or 11 in, in uh, audios. Did they purposely break us up like that? I think they did because I don't think that there's any overlap. I think that they, they were trying to, they're like, Oh, they so wanted me. So if someone had a special that was also an album, they just, you guys, you, you were only nominated in the specials category and the I believe album so. only people okay yeah that's which cool. i think is smart because it, it's a way to get out get out more names mm -hmm. for people and then yeah. who doesn't like being on a list love to be and on a list. Very love hard. to be on a list and the thing is is they're like you get to vote but these they've already chosen their oh, top they have? 11 for the year well they've already chosen their top 11 for the year it doesn't matter what order i'm in i'm still the top 11 right because uh have you read people like reviewers describing your contents? Yes. It's weird, right? Yeah, yeah, it's weird. And sometimes it's very flattering and sometimes it's, okay. You're like, cause I don't know if you know this about Lori Kilmartin but she's said a lot of tragedy but she's turned it into lemonade. <laughs> or I mean, so, well, I, I, people, I, what I've read, it's like a uh, single mom. <laughs> Which I guess I bring that up a lot, but I mean, the other part is like, who cares what it's about? It's like how they're talking about it. And it's, it's, are there good jokes or not? You know, like, but they always know. break it. It's they weird. always like, break it. To me, like that, that topic would, um, see if you say, oh, someone talks about being a single mom. Well, if you're not a mom, maybe you don't want to get, hear that shit without go, you know what I mean? Versus like, these are good jokes having to be about this topic or whatever. I don't know. Well, you know, whenever anybody asks what kind of comedy you do, you just want to go, well, it's, uh, it's, because uh, if you start telling them topics, they're like, they get, they get a vision in their mind. The topics don't matter. It's how you do it. I, for me, I would, I would rather be called dark as than a single mom. Mm -hmm. 
you know? <laughs> Seriously. Right, right. Although it makes sense too, because uh, you are darkly a single mom. Yeah, and I mean, I, I might get married one day. You don't know. Yeah, so stop. I might not be a single mom my whole life, right? Right, right, right. Maybe I'll be a married grandma. Is that how, is that how I'll be described next? It's, and have you ever thought about correcting and saying, I'm the primary character? The <laughs> mom seems. I just don't think majority. your topics should define who you are as a comic as opposed to your, your style, you know? Right, right. It's, uh, well, I mean, they always call me a storyteller. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if they're not wrong, but. Um, right. And which I suppose is better than saying, you know, she's still talking about her dad and her and her and her husband. Right. Her, yeah. Exactly. Um, I guess so. It's it's weird, but I mean, I I think we kind of talked about this last week too. But like, if I were to make another album that you know consists of the stuff I have on that I'm working on now, it would be similar topics, mm-hmm. you know, but just d- done differently. <laughs> Different. I don't know different jokes about the same things that because the thing is is everyone's life is made up of the four yeah it doesn't change that much yeah yeah it's still who you you know where who you're standing next to most days and i mean when uh when my first album came out i was a single mom you know so i guess when the third when the whatever the fourth one comes out i will also be one you know right and um yeah, I don't, somebody asked me one time, and I think I've told you this, are you still doing jokes about your dad? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I think, I don't know how, I mean, I, I was offended at the time because I was like, they're not the same jokes about my yeah, dad. <laughs> right, right. And my dad remains, continues to be psyched that he's still being <laughs> so, You know, and the other thing is like, um, you know, people develop a, uh, what's called parasocial relationships with comedians, right? And everyone was like really upset with John Mulaney because he talked about his wife so much, they felt like they knew her. And then when they broke up, you know, people felt really like uh, betrayed, you know, like his fans. So I don't know, if you were to not talk about your dad, you know, your fans feel like they know him. They really do. And I, as I like to say, uh, he's great uh, in my act, and he can be great in real life. Um, yeah, in doses, but, as but all parents is, are. Right, in as all parents are, as all. It turns out he is human, and as as flawed as the next person, especially if the next person is a bit of a button pusher. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, what is John Mulaney's uh, social history? Is he didn't he just have a baby with somebody? He um, so I, I, he bro- he and his wife split up after he was in rehab. Okay, and um, and then he uh, paired up with Olivia Munn. That's right. Who's not popular? <laughs> right for for some reason people are like she's a bitch or I don't know. I well, had lunch with I her mean, one time. I listened she to this podcast. There's this podcast uh, that uh, Ashley Hamilton and I forget the other person's name, another comic, does where they read celebrity memoirs and they're and then they review it and their review of Olivia Munn's memoir is very telling, uh, reflective of what I imagine her personality is, and it's like ah, hmm. but you know who knows who anyone is at this <laughs> point in life. And, uh, but she got pregnant and she just had a baby like two days ago. So she had, uh, um, oh, a little John boy Lady and Olivia Munn are mm-hmm. a couple and she had the baby she uh, with him. She had a baby with him. Right now. They may not, they may not be a couple any longer, but I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure of that, but here's the thing. He, he had a, a lot of material about not wanting kids and about loving being with his wife, which is why people were so riled up that uh he uh you know he paired off with somebody else and uh had a kid you remember how like and this is this is a thousand years ago but um traditionally david letterman never wanted to get married again because he had gotten married when he was a a weatherman in nebraska back Mm -hmm. in the 12th century and so then when he got his show him and Meryl Marco were together for 20 odd years she was his head writer she created all that man on the street stuff 
and he never wanted to get married. He never wanted to have kids. And then he turned a hundred and he was like, but my legacy, but my sperms. And then, so he found some much younger woman and he married her and had a baby. I don't know that she was much younger. Um, I, much I'm younger sure. than him because he had, if, if he'd gone with a woman his age, she couldn't have had Well, her. if I remember correctly, she was pretty old when she had the kid, like early to mid forties. Where it was okay. like it was almost right, like right. Real so it wasn't like country. he married like a twenty two year old. He, he no, wasn't. no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. The the ba- his the mother. I think he married the mother of his son, but I think she also. And maybe I'm confusing her with Riel Hunter, who um, had uh, John John Edwards's baby. Do you remember <laughs> that? Oh, that that was a scandal. That was a that was an incredible scandal. Uh, right. Somebody could look that up. I guess I don't know. But, um, but she was also like in her mid forties and got pregnant by accident, which you would at your mid forties In your mid forties, you, you really don't expect to get pregnant. So, and, I, right. and if I remember correctly, I, I think uh, Letterman's uh, baby mama was also mid, mid forties. It was a shocker. Right. But what I'm saying is, you know, uh, <laughs> Comedians, uh, we, you know, we uh, use our real lives for our act. And um, so my real life and your real life, they kind of continue. We, we don't have abrupt left turns like uh, John Mulaney. So, right. you know, take comfort in that, you parasocial freaks. <laughs> if you, if you're the kind of person that needs that a steady hand at the mic. Come to Jackie and me, not these male comics that are so horny all the time. Right. Or who have some dream of, of, um, yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. Uh, I think she was only like 13 years younger than him, but, um, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that is, that's banana land. I want, um, what Jackie, what are you thinking about talking about right now? Come on. I see your mind searching, trying to fill time. What, what, what? Entirely. I literally almost just said, I just want to do stand up again. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, the problem is <laughs> we on it, we start losing our powers when we stop doing stand up and we just turn into things you that might stare. as well cut my hair and <laughs> then all of a sudden i'm like samson without hair um yeah, yeah. you haven't been on stage in a while that's it, it it is weird to all of a sudden be to be scared of being in a club again like that was um the last time we felt like this everything was shut down and now it's all just it's open and um Mm-hmm. You know, you, uh, you, I guess you have to assess your risk level, but we're, we all have high risk level. Yeah. Even if you're boosted there, you're getting a breakthrough. You can get a breakthrough. Get a breakthrough. But we went to, we went to breakfast in the hotel today and yeah. the last couple of meals, we just did room service. Yeah. And, um, but this morning we went and like split a small breakfast, the three of us, and then they checked our vax cards against ID at the door. And then we went, we met the cousins again and we went for dim sum and they checked our ids and vax cards at the door so it's they're doing they're at least checking they're like if you're gonna sit inside we want you to be vaccinated and right. uh, and that's good i mean so that lessens the odds mm-hmm. but it doesn't eliminate them right it's uh you know, when I think about the people that we know that had it, they've had it for like a good week, the breakthroughs, mm-hmm. they're like a week or two and it was a drag. So, uh, I know someone worried had a breakthrough about and it's way more than a drag. Yeah. You're, and, you're worried about long-term, right? Well, I, I think everyone should be worried that they would have possible long, long COVID, <clears throat> which could be anything, you know, brain fog. We can't afford to have brain fog exhaustion <laughs> can that be the name of this episode we can't afford to have brain fog we're not like some of you uh, other people out there who can easily afford to have some brain fog our brains have to be popping 24 7 okay it is um yeah i feel like i have brain fog right now mm-hmm. we did that uh we did that, that gift exchange and andy got a caftan yeah and uh i tried it on and i put it on instagram and then andy 
and then Andy tried it on and I so want to just do like one of those pictures um who wore it best (laughs) (laughs) yeah let's take a break okay comic of the week let's do comic of the week let's do comic of the week there we go it's ashima right is that ashima franklin yes ashima franklin atlanta comic from the Mm -hmm. south yeah bringing it in new york that was the clip i saw yeah i saw her just doing crowd work and just (laughs) taking absolutely no prisoners (laughs) i haven't worked with her before but she looked fun yeah she looked really fun let me on a show with her somebody please (laughs) I know it. I, so I've decided, wait, so uh, it's at Ashima Franklin, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, L-I-N or L-Y-N? L-I-N? L-I-N. I L-I-N. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and find it in the, in, in the, in the links and everything, uh, in the notes. And I have this to say about, because I, because that's where we would run into her, I think. I think she's an Atlantic comic, but the clip I saw was in New York. And um, I'm gonna. Well, you're only allowed to perform in one or the other. So, call <laughs> Jackie. She must live in New York. I think she lives in New York because of the clip. Anyway, but I'm probably wrong. Mm-hmm. The but what I do. So I'm gonna go on the 16th mm-hmm. in New York as mm-hmm. of right now. Right. And I am going to just we're gonna do the show on the 17th. I'm just gonna stay until the 20th and then i'm going to go to royal oak and then i'm going to go home and then i'm going to come back to the midwest and do comedy on state and i booked all of my flights and i was talking to the woman and i was like you know i'm i'm a 3500 dollar flight away 3500 dollars worth of, of flights away from diamond status and she goes sure are silence wow. and i was like I, I, and wow. so I, what i could do wow. is i could spend four grand which is what it would be to fly to like well i couldn't fly internationally i'd have to quarantine um right where's the so, place you wouldn't have to quarantine russia i think they'd let you right into russia and uh, <laughs> brazil know. you could go right sail right into brazil <laughs> sail right in yeah i was thinking jakarta because I've always wanted to go, Ooh. but I don't want to go to Jakarta for 12 hours after flying for 12 hours and then flying would back. Would that be a uh, first trip. class? I think it would be a, a, well, not, not to Jakarta. Jakarta would, uh, if I, if I, if I, like, I would have to do it in the next five days. Like, what is it? The 26th? How fun. It's not going to happen. It's not happening. Why not? Because then I, mean, I, what, I, honestly, I would have to flight... hold my air purifier on my lap. <laughs> And fly flight to Florida. Indianapolis from LAX, if you made it for tonight, would cost four thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah it would. Mm-hmm. you're right. I'm unwilling. Um, I could maybe I could fly from Oakland to <laughs> that would make it super expensive. So I'm just gonna be platinum. I'm gonna be like Galadriel in Lord of the Rings, Lori. And I'm gonna diminish and go into the West. Uh when Arthur oh, yes. the Ring. Yeah. <laughs> I do identify with diminishing. I do feel like I'm being slowly erased from Earth, and uh, yeah. like it, starting with my toes, and uh, it's just moving on up very slowly. Very slowly, you're being erased. Um, Are you seeing? All, uh, just seeing all these people post their shows, I'm like uh, <laughs> anxiety. But then there's a lot of people that aren't doing it. It's just such a weird thing. Like at least before everything all shut down and you couldn't do it, you know, unless you were going to go to Florida and then you were kind of a pariah. Mm -hmm. But now we're all just sort of like, uh, hey, uh, we're all doing stand up again. Mask up. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell the people either. I mean, there's no way for it to. I mean, eventually. I guess it becomes. Like if there's going to be another variant after this one, of course there is. So are we going to live like this forever? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, depends which thread I read. Right. I, I don't. I don't mind the idea of wearing a mask on on planes and stuff forever. Right. And you should see my Christmas mask. I bought. I I got kind of. I went to Priscilla's in Toluca Lake. 
Oh yeah. And had, and had outdoor house. coffee with a friend. Mm -hmm. And um and the Priscilla's, of course, in Toluca Lake is a fancy neighborhood. Yeah. Where they um and the tchotchkes that they've got, like the little trinkets, they had paper masks that had Christmas scenes printed on them for three bucks each. Guess who got taken for a buggy ride? Because I wanted a snowman mask. Oh this boy. Jackie Cage. Oh boy. That's right. Because I love, I love Christmas. I love Christmas. And you know, people, there's some people who hate it because it like bad things happened on Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bad things happen every day of the year. Well, don't I give mean, up Christmas. Don't give up Christmas. A terrible thing happened. Jesus was born on Christmas. That was awful. <laughs> he was actually born. Well, the, the great thing about Armenian Christmas, it goes till January 6th. So we keep the tree up till the 6th. We give, we, we, we cut ourselves some slack with presents and and uh and and making turkey and stuff and yeah it's gonna be great um yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't, I love, I love I don't have a real like i was just thinking we should have we should have had christmas merch or i should have had christmas merch that you just sell in your weeks in december what a wasted opportunity like a lot of what comedy what, what, christmas what storage merch. night it's a storage nightmare 11 months of the year. Well, well not, 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 if you sell it out. not if you sell it out, not if you start right after Halloween, just like the rest of the merch. Yeah, for sure. We got to remember that for next year. And we need more holiday chunks. I need more. I need, I need holiday material. You know, that's where all the, that's where all that serious money is going this week or this month is to people with Christmas chunks. Well, um, 103.1 in in denver comedy now channel. here we go again uh. <laughs> well i i recorded i had to pick he sent me hundreds of he has a list george has a list of hundreds of bits that are just about christmas and hanukkah and winter and solstice and like sort of all right winter holiday chunks and he said if you could pick like 24 of them and then uh, tape interstitials, tape introductions yeah. for each of them. And I was like, wow, for each Did of you them? get paid? No, but he, uh, here's what I got paid in. He played my album every oh. hour. He okay. played a clip, he played one of my, one of my Christmas bits. Um, and I think I have three Christmas bits over five albums. Oh, that's cool. And are so, they, are they a, a rare, like uh, independent comedy, um, comedy yeah. channel or the, is it just his show on an independent radio station that does comedy george is always he's creates like these comedy networks like he created a comedy network in texas remember that comedy radio station in in austin or houston or something it, like that yeah and then, i do and Didn't, then he sold it to like verizon or um yeah I so do remember that the grinch i don't know who he sold it to it was out of san antonio i think mm -hmm. Tommy san antonio yeah, mm -hmm. Tommy Munoz worked on it. And so he sold it, made a pretty good bag of money. Mm -hmm. And then they tried to w w make it happen and it didn't work. So it went Cleto, away. It was Cle Cleto Rodriguez's late night show. And that, what is that? That was the show. It was, I was trying to remember who uh, who helmed it. It was Cleto Rodriguez. It was kind of, he's kind of um, uh, Christian a little bit. <laughs> But he's funny, you know, but, but like, you know, within that wheelhouse for sure. Okay. And then all I know is that George keeps making these, these radio stations mm -hmm. in different markets and then selling them. Yeah. Hold and on for the a second. People who buy them can't deal. They Just, can't fix it. Wait, hold on. I'm be someone's knocking. What? Huh? Wow. So we that have to stop the break. presses. So my son could ask where the pooper scooper is. Um, right. Well, at least he's scooping some poops. Yeah. Um, yeah. Finally, while it's light out, usually he does it at night, you know, like it's the last <laughs> thing before going to bed and he misses 80% of the poops and then I step on him in my slippers. Okay. Gross. So when we, so, so George sold this network, but he still has a radio station. He just starts another one and then oh, he okay. sells it again. And then he starts another one. Why aren't we doing these things? Cause we're not, why, why are, what, where's our dry bar empire? Why don't we have that kind of money thinking? Well, because you're George the daughter of a fucking salesman. Oh, I understand it from me because my dad constantly lost money. But you, come on. <laughs> 
My dad didn't make a great deal of money, but then remember he spent it all. Uh, Cause he made he it, liked, he spent it, right? Yeah, he liked to gamble. He has several pinky rings. It's all working <laughs> out for him. And uh, <laughs> he is, but we, we don't have it. Cause that's not, that's not the thing that we want to do, right? George likes making, making radio stations. Hmm. Yeah. And he likes collecting, I think, was it him? I it might not have been him. I met a guy who likes to collect, um, and it wasn't George. It was, this is just a side story. We got time. So, yes. um, uh, animation cells. Hmm. Like, uh, you know, oh, uh, before yeah, yeah, yeah. Though, everyone would make their every cell and then they would make them go fast. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you had an animated cartoon. And one of those, and this guy liked to collect animated cells. Oh, I came up with a new process. Ooh. Okay. So, the- so I've been trying to figure out like, you know, y- y- so many of these clubs have these amazing video systems right now. Okay. Yeah. And so they'll, they'll send you your, your sets and they're like two to five gigabyte files, <laughs> you know, you cannot, there's no way to manipulate them without going onto your super hard drive at home. Right. You can't do anything on an iPhone or on an iPad on the road, whatever. So I've been trying to like, you know, like I'll do crowd work. It'll just be little snips, but when I get off stage, I don't remember what it was or where I said it. It was all, it's all in the zone. Right. And so I I have to watch the whole set again. And then they start to build up. And I, all of a sudden I have 10, 55 minute sets I have to watch. And I, and I'm like, I can't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to figure out how to, how to just make it doable for me. And so now what I'm doing, so, so like I got my sets from Acme and uh, they're gigantic. They're between two to three gigabytes, right? So I open it in okay. quick time, save it as a 480. That's the size, the smallest size. Then I upload that to Kapwing, K-A-P-W-I-N-G. They have, oh, and I have to cut it in half. I first, I put the, I, I uploaded a 50 minute set and it took like 10 hours for it to auto-generate the uh, captions, right? So now I cut it in half. Maybe I'll just cut them in quarters too. In, in you can do that in iTunes, I think, or excuse me, in iMovie. Oh, there, it's all. Here's the thing, though. It's so many apps, and I'm like, oh, what do I do? And it's so annoying. Whatever. So then I, um, you get it captioned, and they also make an SRT file, which is basically a text of the entire captioning. Yep. And now I can look at the whole thing. I can either watch the video or or um, or read the read the, the SRT transcript file. and go yeah. and find the things that I said that were riffy, and then go find the time code in the film and go, is this work worth you know clipping out? Which still takes a long time, but it's a lot. It's it's easier than me just sitting and watching a fifty five <laughs> minute set right, for right. one couplet of one exchange with an audience member. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I know. I uh, I tend to edit them in the photo app on my phone, which is will sometimes take away the sync. You'll notice it sometimes with our with the clips that I was doing previously of this program that we share right here, mm-hmm. and um, it is it's so much work. I want to I want to put up more clips and stuff, but um, I'm tired. It's a massive amount of work. You know who does a great job is uh, Sam Morell. Oh yeah? Yeah, he does a really good job of pulling his stuff from um, his crowd work from sets and just putting it up. I, I don't know if he hires somebody or he does it himself or- I was know. pretty impressed with what Pete Lee was doing for a while too. Oh, Pete yeah, Lee was doing that a lot as well? Yeah. And so I assume that they're hiring people. You think, really? Don't know. I mean, uh, what I like to think, what I like to think is that they're not better organized than me. And, <laughs> and <doing it. laughs> um, very quickly, this person, I just worked at club recently of the clubs I work recently. This person brings somebody on the road to, um, to sell merch only. That is that person's only job. Wow. And that person is not a comedian. It's not the feature also do, doing double duty after the show. That person's only job is to manage the merch table, which is gigantic. And she makes fuckloads of money after the show. Wow. 
because she does characters and she sells merch that's tied to different characters. And she has to pay that person. So she better get a boat ton of money. But it's still Um, worth it, apparently. Yeah. Didn't you, didn't, didn't we see, and you, like, I think you sent me a a link to a tweet that was Banana Land uh, with some one of the younger comics. I don't, I can't even talk about that tweet. It made me so angry. I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm going to. And here's what I say. We all Let's get one take, bad tweet. Yeah. Take a break. Take a break and come back to it. We all get one bad tweet. I here's here's my speculation. Because the thing is, is when we're all young comics, yeah, we feel relatively invincible. You know, right, you right, feel right, like right. you have all this energy, you have all this interest, you have all this hope and 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 and, and belief. Life. Belief. Yeah belief in the system belief that your talent will be recognized that is belief enough. yeah, yeah belief yeah, that yeah, there is faith. some kind of justice yeah it is belief because faith would mean that it would be anyway so but the um but the weird thing is is um yeah so i wanted to, to tweet back to her that i wanted to ask her if she had ever read the jungle by upton sinclair right because he had a lot of belief in the beginning of the jungle mm-hmm. uh, because he was also a six foot six perfectly healthy guy and he's like just pull yourself up from your bootstraps anybody can get a job right, anybody right, can right. do this anybody can do this and then he got and by the end of the the book he gets sick and now he's now he's they're not picking him as fast because he doesn't look like he can do the work of three men right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so and the and the woman who did this tweet i don't know her and I don't, and, and we won't name her because everyone gets one bad tweet, right? Or and one crazy tweet. She's a young, very beautiful young woman. And, um, and she's like, I can't believe people think that stand-up comedy is hard. And that it's oh, hard you're to gonna, get You're just going to go into it. All right, fine. I'm going into it because we're not going to name her. I can't even remember her name. I don't even care. Because, um, well... Kyle, at some point, we will find out who it is for you. Okay, because I am unaware and, of this, and it sounds and, infuriating. Well, and it's 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 just so sweeping, right? And you have to, and it, and it comes from such a place. I'm loath to use the word privilege, and um, because it's, I mean, it it's just. She's like, it was like when I was in high school. I remember saying, um, no. Uh, it is, uh, it I'm is shooting guesses in the chat. <laughs> <She's> guessing, <laughs> no. She's guessing. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. And, uh, and Wait, it when not even it. she would say that tweet, you know, it's a bad one. <laughs> yeah. It's my yeah. mindset right now. Oof. <laughs> right. And, and it's, it's not, I mean, it's sometimes, I remember when I was very young, I used to think that everyone could do what I could do right? It takes some experience to realize that you have a certain talent or you have a certain uh, gift or you, and, and, and if you have a certain privilege, um, you know, to, to realize these things and then try to have some perspective of what everybody else is seeing when they see you or what they can't do versus what you can't do. So it was, but it was, it, I was so mad that I could not say the Upton Sinclair thing because I, it made me think, well, probably hasn't even read it. No, I didn't say that. I didn't. I, well, I didn't you know, it's very difficult to have a career in comedy. Yeah. So well, I don't know. Yeah. So remember that <laughs> <laughs> before tweeting. Oh, uh, well, um, like, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Kamala Harris tweeted that uh, like everyone should have two thousand dollars monthly during the, as long as there's COVID or something like that. That was a bad yeah. tweet because she can't deliver it and won't. So right, even I, the she, vice president of the United States had a bad tweet. So mm-hmm. we're all we all get it. We all get one. Yeah, I thought we did the second break. Did we? No. No, we didn't. Oh, nah. Let's do it. That was a message that was in the that was in the chat, you guys. Kyle, hey, we could do that second break. <laughs> and uh, this will be Jackie Cation, by the way. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and Lori Kilmartin, and then Kyle Kyle Clark work at the, hey work at the turntable. Uh, <laughs> so are we gonna try to do a Zoom show just to get our chops back, or not to lose them? I would love to. I would love to. I um, I can't do Tuesday night, but like uh, Wednesday night, I could. Thursday night. Mm. Yeah. Monday night. Uh, tonight. Just right now. Let's hang in there. <laughs> Turn to your computers right now, everyone. <laughs> we uh, yeah. Like, what could I do? I could do. I can't do Monday because I'm still. I'll be driving all day. Okay. And I might be driving Tuesday, but let's do a Wednesday. Let's do Wednesday. I'll be in uh, Vermont, the, and uh, and you yeah, will be relatively well list, rested, right? Yeah, I think so. Right. Like we we're taking a red eye, and uh, we're getting in on Tuesday morning ish or mid you know, like 11 or something like that. And, um, you know, maybe we'll go walk around in the woods while we wait for the hotel to open up for the room to open up. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, this is sad because when we don't do stand up, we have nothing to say. This is really, <laughs> this is COVID's true devastation. <laughs> <laughs> what it's done to this our podcast. The, this is the true tragedy of a, <laughs> of a global pandemic. When we run out of things to talk about at what minute? 45? Where are we at? 51. We're doing all right. It's, doing it's right. hard to complain about comedy when you haven't done much of it in the past five days. You know? Who was your first favorite comic? Oh, no, stop it. I, this is a podcast question I've been asked 3,000 times already. Oh, okay. Uh, no, nah. I reject you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you watched any? Um, um, I started watching Southside uh, on HBO Max. Nope. It's really funny. It's uh, okay. it's just comedy out of Chicago. And it's they're using a ton of Chicago comics and... Uh, I recommend stand up show, stand up show. No, no, no. It's a lot of stand ups are in it, and or okay. or, com or comedy people are in it, you know, mm -hmm. or producing it. Langston Kerman uh, just wrote. He just wrote the one I just watched, which is great. So um, oh, that's cool. it's really, it's really funny. Check it out. It's I, on HBO Max. I saw Spider Man and uh, all of Hawkeye. Did you go into that's, a theater? I went to a theater. Okay. And we were, yeah, our local theater, which. Um, is on Van Nuys just by Roscoe kind of. Yeah. And it's usually just families. And it's what I love about seeing a Marvel movie is that it's usually just packed to the gills. This is 2019. Yeah. And it's just kids and everybody yelling at the, the at psyched and it's teenagers and it's great. Um, that was not our, the experience with uh, Spider-Man Far From Home because um, they have changed it to assigned seating because oh. of COVID. So you pick where you're going to sit and they block out certain areas so that they, everyone's spread out and they only sell a certain number. And, um, but we had a really good time. It was really, really good. They did a really nice job with it, bringing it sort of back together. And then Hawkeye was a Christmas episodes. It was outstanding. And um, yeah, I'm on board. I'm on, mm -hmm. to no one's surprise. I still enjoy Marvel. <laughs> um my son's been giving me the daily countdown as to when attack on titan will return okay uh it's 14 days 14 uh, days from this today. very day mm -hmm. i've been hearing about it since day 19 i think <laughs> uh, but we're like both an we're excited. For i might be out of town so we're gonna watch it together with cheryl um on the um on like maybe on facetime we'll all be connected together and watch it oh nice yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's the advent calendar where giant people get to eat tiny people, and um, Jackie, I think there's more you just revealed it. your ignorance. I'm so <laughs> embarrassed for you, but okay, whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, my comic book reading uh, has been good. Um, I've been trying to catch up on a bunch of comic books, and oh, there's a new lady. There's a uh, autistic lady Sherlock series that I fucking love mm. where they've reimagined Sherlock Holmes as a woman. And the sixth, mm -hmm. um, the sixth book is pretty great. Sherry Thomas, you guys, lady Sherlock. Um, and, yeah. I'm still reading Bel Canto. Oh yeah. 
I read three pages and I'm like, yep, that's great. And then I fall asleep. It's taking (laughs) me forever. I I have things piling up to the ceiling that I want to read and I can't, I can't get, there's no plot in this thing. It's a very plotless thing. It's all about relationships and things unfolding. And um, so there's nothing to like force you to keep reading like what happens next really, even though it, it would seem like it's a hostage situation, but it's <laughs> slow motion hostage situation. <laughs> and so you ever see speed Two? No. Oh, it's terrible. It's like, like watching someone run at you with a knife for an hour and a half. Oh, wow. Um, but Bill Canto is supposed to be better written than that. It's great. Um, it is great. Yeah. But it just yeah. moves so slowly. I did finish uh, the Thursday murder mist, the first Thursday murder mystery book. Okay. Which is uh, essentially it's set in a retirement home. Right. And old people solve murder mysteries. Nothing wrong with that. That's it's cocoon meets something bones. God knows. And, and my mom um, had uh, many theories on murders. So I, yeah, sure. I can't wait to get the age where I can solve murders. <laughs> When does that happen? Any minute, any minute now. I think it's <laughs> my, my, uh, my dad, he, he, he had an IRA that he left to my mom that, uh, $15,000 in it. Right. Okay. And, uh, so my sister and I split it and, uh, we we're just now like claiming it or something. And there's like, the, we're just laughing at how bad he was with money because there's, <laughs> he sh- there. I, I called Schwab and they're like, what are these petroleum shares? I'm like, petroleum, are you? I would never buy petroleum. And then, uh, then I realized that they meant it was part is in my dad's thing. And uh, it was a company that gone out of business and it's just like classic him. Like, yeah, yeah. His shares that are worth nothing because the company went out of business. My poor dad, he was so bad with money. And my uncle was so good with money. It's, it's just so weird, whatever. It is weird. And different people mm-hmm. are, um, all you can do is keep plugging, I guess. That's what Deb used to have you watched Maria Bamford's, uh, 12 reasons not to kill yourself in 2022. No, I saw that, but I didn't watch it. Cause I was, uh, I couldn't uh, spare the time at the moment. <laughs> well, was it, did it have to do with American petroleum company? <laughs> it's, it's something to look forward to, uh, if you ever get suicidal. So, yeah. um, uh, t- twice during this podcast, I should have watched it. <laughs> <laughs>